While Montenegro's election signals major changes for the country's future, Bulgaria's latest vote once again didn't bring any clear winner. Bulgarians went to the polls for the fifth time in two years, hoping to take the country out of its political deadlock and towards a stable coalition. The center-right bloc, GERB SDS, led by Boyko Borisov, came out first with over 26 percent. It's closely followed by former Prime Minister Kirill Petkov's We Continue the Change-led alliance with nearly 25 percent. The two main blocs have been struggling to form a stable coalition, leading to a deeply fragmented parliament and a string of interim governments. But the pro-Russia revival party has seen a rise in support and came third in the ballot. Let's take a closer look at what can we expect to happen this time. Законна физиката, ентропията, хаоса нараства непрекъсно. Същото става в България. Иван е един от много българи, които вълнат на сънтай. И това скептицизъм има своите причини. България е своята фифта лекция в лес на 2 години. На бъдеще на COVID-19, корупция и економична турмоя. И политическата вакуум върнава страната до възможността на възможността за почти 2 години. Every election since 2021 brought the same outcome, no governing majority. The threshold in Bulgaria is 4%, equal to 10 seats. And a party needs at least 121 out of 240 seats to form a government. If not, it has to seek that majority through a coalition. But given the current political deadlock, this formula seems impossible. The latest election results show the same voting patterns with the same leads as in the previous votes, but with a slight change in actors. Three-time Prime Minister Boyko Borisov and his center-right Gerb party kept first place. Running neck and neck, the pro-Western We Continued the Change, led by Kirill Petkov, stayed in second place. The far-right fiercely pro-Russian and the anti-EU and NATO revival party got 14% of the vote the centrist movement for rights and freedoms slipped to 13%. The biggest crash saw the left electoral coalition of the Bulgarian Socialist Party slump to about 9%. And the sixth party, there are such people, barely passed the threshold. And the reactions echoed the results. Disappointment in the same old politics. <laughs> But there is also some optimism. But winning the election is the easy part. Now a fragmented parliament has to make compromises and form a government. Or another election will be all but inevitable. And many feel the same way. The last election cost about $50 million. And this is the fifth in just two years. It is a hefty expense, considering Bulgaria has the EU's lowest GDP per capita. If we don't have the budget, we can't be able to be able to do it, because it will fall directly. With no clear winner yet again, there is no guarantee that a coalition government will even be formed. In October, Bulgaria will hold local elections. So if the parties fail to produce a working government, there will be a double ballot. The endless elections not only delay reforms on corruption and harden access to the EU's pandemic recovery funds, they also hold the country back from joining the Eurozone. And the deepening political turmoil has cast a dark shadow over Bulgarians, who are already tired of waiting for better days. Let's cross to Sofia now. Uh, Ruslan Stefanov is there for us. He is the director of the economic program of the Center for the Study of Democracy. And he's also the co-author of the Kremlin Playbook, a project on Russia's influence in Europe. Great to have you with us, uh, Ruslan, on Across the Balkans. Great to have you too. Uh, as we just heard uh, in, in that story, Bulgaria is again set for tough coalition talks. What are the possible scenarios this time that we can expect? Well, yeah, I mean, it's uh, 
what we are talking about is essentially a very clear cut uh, uh, discussion. You know, either we'll have a wide Euro Atlantic coalition um, where the first um, party GERP of the former Prime Minister Boko Borisov and the we continue the change and democratic Bulgaria will make the so called grand coalition. Uh, drawing in probably one or two other parties uh, because they they have enough, or we're we're just going to head off for new elections. Because I think there are of course other mathematical opportunities besides this grand coalition, but politically it will be uh, uh, as difficult as this grand coalition. So I'm thinking if we have to if we if I have a put a, to put a percentage. I would say that it's still the most likely outcome would be new elections. But I think this time there is also a lot of pressure from uh, people. You know, 70 percent of Bulgarians actually think that uh, Bulgaria should form a, a stable uh, elected government. Um, so I believe that there will be pressure for parties to come together. So um, uh, the grand coalition is probably the most preferred. Uh, by the leading party that will first uh, offer a, uh, a try at the government. Then there are other possibilities which will, though, involve politically very unusual uh, bedfellows. That will be the other the other mathematical possibility is, of course, the GERB, the leading polit political party, uh, with the um, uh, Socialist Party, with the Turkish Minority Party, uh, DPS, and also the um, uh, the uh, uh, showman's party, Slavi Trifonov. So these are mathematically possible. And of course, there is also the um, discussion about the minority government from We Continue the Change with the second mandate. Uh, I don't think if the first mandate falls through, I don't think that it will be possible to do it with the other mandate. So I still think the most likely outcome will be another round of elections. But I think the chances for forming a government have also increased. I can see uh, Bulgarian political parties being silent, which in this case is probably a good sign because right. they don't want to uh, uh, they don't want to incite each other. Right. Those are the scenarios. Uh, something similar we have seen before. As you said, many are expecting another elections. Unfortunately, this will cost a lot of money to Bulgarians. What, what what's different this time? Again, we are seeing a, a rise of the pro Russia revival party. They came out third this time. Exactly. I mean, there is a, a very clear trend that um, uh, protest votes goes to uh, revival. Um, and if we take together um, uh, GERB, so the leading party in the second, uh, we continue to change, they together lose votes to the anti-systemic parties, you know, because both revival, uh, the pro-Russian revival, uh, and the um, the party of the, the showman Slavik Trifonov, they are anti-systemic. That means that, there is a risk. There is the risk they will lose more in the future. So there is a fear that they will lose even more in in, in next uh, elections. Uh, and of course, there is a risk that the country also goes into financial and and other sort of turmoils because clearly Bulgaria is also not not aligning itself with its partners in the EU and NATO. Uh, yes, not at all. And uh, as you just mentioned, if uh, people continue to be disappointed at these two main parties and their progress and coalition talks, they, we can expect even bigger rise uh, from the pro-Russian parties uh, in Bulgaria. So uh, what, are, what is the best scenario, let's say, for the Western embassies uh, when it comes to um, the rising Russian influence in Bulgaria? What would be the best scenario for them to happen? Well, I'm not sure it's the, I, I think it's the best scenario for the Bulgarian strategic um, uh, approach. You know, there's been a clear Euro-Atlantic coalition in the last four parliaments. I, th I think there will be a clear one here. I mean, the last parliament that was disbanded without forming a government, they voted a, uh, that with overwhelming two-thirds majority. They voted that Bulgaria supports militarily Ukraine. So I think in terms of majority, there is a clear majority within Bulgaria that is pro-EU, pro-NATO, and, and, and pro-Ukraine. Uh, that means people, but also our allies, of course, in the EU and NATO, they would like to see this majority come to fruition. They would like to see a stable government that would clearly chart Bulgaria's priorities. And that means support for Ukraine, um, uh, entering the Eurozone, uh, entering the Schengen Agreement, but first and foremost, of course, taking, making sure 
that the Bulgarian population um, uh, doesn't live through another economic uh, uh, crisis that is taking care of the um, uh, social conditions, you know, taking care of that inflation doesn't bite as uh, uh, as bad as possible. So I think in that respect, both the our Western allies, but also the population, um, uh, the majority of the population, again, I'm quoting 70 percent of the of the surveyed Bulgarians say they, they want to have a stable government because this would also mean uh, a more clear future for Bulgaria, more investment, more EU money uh, that will exactly. be spent better. Uh, and, 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 of course, better life in the end of the day. And this is what um, most of Bulgarians told me while I was there uh, during the last elections. They, they more care about the economic issues and they just want the government who will bring more investments. Uh, Ruslan Stefanov, uh, great to have you with us. Thank you again for being our guest. Thank you. One of the most important cases from the wars that stretched through the 90s began this week at the Kosovo Specialist Chambers in The Hague. Former Kosovo president Hashim Tachi went on trial and pleaded not guilty. He is being charged alongside three co-defendants, all principal leaders of the Kosovo Liberation Army, or the so-called KLA. Hashim Tachi is accused of war crimes and crimes against humanity that he allegedly committed between March 1998 and September 1999 in Kosovo and Albania during and just after the war with Serbia. Tachi is regarded as a hero in his country, and many Kosovars believe that the case is politically motivated. Thousands of people gathered in Pristina to express solidarity with former commanders of the KLA and to show their disapproval of the charges. We are gathered in support of the leaders of the Kosovo Liberation Army. We are all with them, and we will stand by them until the end. We are their biggest supporters and we want freedom for them. If they are innocent, then we are all innocent. But if they are guilty, then we are all guilty. Let us be imprisoned together. President Thatchi is and was a great man that did tremendous things for uh, Kosovo to bring about its liberation and uh, to turn it into the country is th that it is today. Uh, and that's something that everybody uh, needs to remember about you know, what this man sacrificed throughout all these years. And hopefully that uh, we'll be able to, to bring that forth in the courtroom and show that he was an honest, truthful man and bring about his acquittal. We will be following this trial closely here on Across the Balkans. That's it for this week. See you next time from me and the whole team here in Istanbul. Bye-bye for now.